lots of people travel to St Ives and walk past the door, not really knowing what's going on inside, which is another reason to, to record it, I think, sort of give it a wider audience. Um, but I think that since being involved in it, even in, at this level, it's, a, yeah, it's a project I would get very upset if it, it, was, uh, if it wasn't done properly, or done at all, I think, yeah. I'd be very upset to see it go. I was on holiday with my daughter and walking along the beach, uh, noticed the studios and we s snuck in to have a look and they were so beautiful. Uh, and it was when we got back to London that I rang up Chris who was, runs the project uh, and asked him whether I could come and record it. Uh, and he was delighted. Two reasons to do it. One is to record the fact that they are so beautiful now and uh, decaying but um, stunning. Um, but also to try and raise awareness and therefore money for the projects to get them renovated properly. Today we basically were recording uh, each studio individually, giving a sense of the, the space and the level of decay and the work that's carried out there. I work for lots of different people, gun for hire, so I photograph everything from buildings to people. So this is, this is combines the two, but I photograph famous people. Um, so there's no PRs hanging around messing things up. For me, it's a dream project to come and to, to come and record something so beautiful and so important. I think so. It's not typical day's work, but um, it encompasses both both aspects of what I normally do. The work that's being produced in there is very different than you see in artist studios and galleries anywhere else in the world. So clearly, I mean, there's a calmness as soon as you walk in there. There's a definite sense of calm and sense of somewhere else, and sense of where it is. Hard to put your finger on exactly what it is, but it seems to be um, transferred from the beach through the studios into the artwork. That that's, seems to happen. I've travelled all over the world, and I don't think I've seen anything like it. It's unique. I think the history behind it, the, the, the fact that it's a, it very neatly sums up St Ives' principal industries, you know, fishing and art, in one building and the fact that it's been going for such a long time and that very important artists have, have worked here and have produced you know, significant works of art. I think that it's, um, it's a unique place and I think it's tragic that it was left to fall into the sea. It's very important that it is, it is saved. It reminded me actually, when, when I first saw it, of uh, Havana, when you go to Cuba, uh, the crumbling buildings, the decay of buildings, and it, it, they are very beautiful. And it's a shame that you can't. There isn't some spray, chemical spray, that you can just freeze it like that, and they would maintain that character. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know they are falling apart, and it's months, it seems, rather than years, before they disappear. So I think it's hugely important that somebody with an enormous wallet and a and a like-minded sense of uh, keeping things as they are, it steps forward quickly, very quickly. <laughs>